Welcome to the second video of the graph series. Now that we know what a graph is, the first thing we may wish to do is to traverse the graph. This means exploring every single vertices on edges of the graph. There are two main approaches for exploring a graph. On this video, we look at the depth first search traversal. For simplicity, we consider only connected graph. First, let's define what a connected graph is. For the time being, I am using a simple definition of a path and forego the more rigorous definition used in graph theory. A path in a graph is a finite sequence of edges which join a sequence of vertices that which are all distinct. The sequence A, B, C, F, E is a path. In an undirected graph, a pair of vertices U, V is called connected if a path leads from U to V. Otherwise, the pair is called disconnected. We can see that the pair A, E is connected. A connected graph is an undirected graph in which every pair of vertices in the graph is connected. Otherwise, it is called a disconnected graph. The graph shown on the right-hand side is a connected graph. The following example is a disconnected graph, composed of two components, A, B, C, D, E, F, and the second component, H, K, M. There is no path between vertices A and vertices K, and therefore the pair A, K is disconnected. Depth of search is a fundamental search algorithm used to explore all nodes on all edges of the graph. For example, the graph shown here could be explored by starting at vertex A, then B, C, F, E, and finally D. It is used as a building block for many algorithms, such as finding if a graph has a cycle or not. Here we can see C, E, F, one of the many cycles of the graph shown on the right-hand side. During the video, we'll be looking at a recursive implementation of the depth-first search. An iterative implementation using a stack data structure is a subject of another video. The depth-first search algorithm is by nature recursive, and its implementation is rather elegant. However, I am aware that many may disagree with the later statement, as recursion is an acquired test, even though it is a very powerful tool. Depth first search involves exhaustively searching all possibilities by advancing if it is possible, and backing up as soon as there is no unexplored possibility for further advancement. Although the algorithm can start from any given node, we will start at vertex 0. Vertex 0 is now marked as visited, highlighted in a color that is not blue. From the node being processed, pick an edge that has not been used. We have two options here, either pick edge 0, 1 or edge 0, 2. Depending on which edge we pick, the order in which the vertices are visited will differ. Nonetheless, both traversals of the graph are valid. Let's pick edge 0, 1. We have not yet finished with vertex 0, as the edge 0, 2 has not been traversed yet. However, we move on to vertex 1 for the time being, and explore from there. Again, we have two choices, edge 1, 3 or edge 1, 2. Let's pick edge 1, 3. Then we keep exploring the graph in that manner. We want to ensure that we are not revisiting the visited node 4. There are no other routes possible, so we go back on our track. We call that backtracking. There are no more unvisited edges from node 6. Therefore, we have finished processing node 6. From there, we backtrack. This time we haven't finished with node 7. 
there is still an edge to explore. We arrive at node 8, which is a dead hand, and label it as processed. We then backtrack until we find a node that is not fully explored, and repeat the procedure of exploring and backtracking when we arrive at a dead end or a visiting node. We are back where we started, and there are no more edges to explore. The search traversal is completed. All nodes on edges have been visited. As I said earlier, the order in which the nodes are visited depends on the initial node, on the order edges are explored at a given node. Here are two examples of a graph traversal. On the left-hand side, the starting point is vertex 0, and on the right-hand side, the starting point is vertex 4. We need to convert this ID into pseudocode. We should note that the backtracking is done by the successive recursive calls. We have also defined a function s.neighbors that returns the list of outgoing edges from a vertex s. The overall performance of the DFS algorithm will depend on this function, and the performance of this function depends on the graph representation you have chosen. On a sparse graph, using adjacency matrix representation will significantly degrade the performance of the algorithm compared to an adjacency list implementation. For example, on a network of around a thousand nodes with about 10,000 edges, the DFS on an adjacency matrix representation will require a number of operations of the order of a million, compared to tens of thousands for an adjacency list implementation. The time complexity of the algorithm is of the order of O, V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. The pseudocode is decomposed into two parts, each part defined by a procedure, or a method in the case of object-oriented programming paradigm. The first procedure sets up the recursion, and sets the starting vertex. The second procedure is the recursion itself. Let's have a closer look at each of the procedures. The first procedure takes two inputs, the graph to traverse and the starting vertex. Again, Source can be any node from the graph. We need some way to track of the vertices that have been visited. This can be in the shape of an array of Boolean of size V, the number of vertices in the graph. False means the vertex has not been visit visited yet, and true means the vertex has been visited. We use an array, but we could have also used a set containing the visited vertices vertices instead. We set the starting vertex as being visited, and then we can start the recursion using the second procedure. The second procedure takes three inputs, the graph to traverse, the vertex S that need to be explored, and the array recording the visited node. First, we check if the node S has already been visited. If that is the case, it is a dead end, and we backtrack. The backtracking is handled by the recursion call, so we don't have to do anything. As I said before, a neatly written recursion is elegant. If the node has not been visited before, then we can proceed. First, we mark it as visited. Then. We do whatever process we want to do during the graph traversal. It could be a simple print statement. Note that this statement could be located after the for loop, or an additional processing step could be added after the for loop. Finally, we iterate through each neighbor of the node S and explore them. We could check if the neighbor has been visited, or we can leave the recursive call handling it, which is the option I have chosen. The recursive call explores the first neighbor of the node S, and the next recursive call explores the first neighbor of the first neighbor, and so on until we arrive at a dead end. Then, the recursive call stack backtracks. When considering disconnected graph, 
there will be some vertices that are not reached by the first iteration of the DFS. For example, using the graph shown on the right hand side, on vertex A as a starting point, the vertices H, K and M will not be visited. To explore the entire graph, pick one of the unvisited nodes, for example K, and run the DFS with K as a starting node. Repeat until there are no more unvisited nodes. Note, you can use this algorithm to label or to count the number of disconnected components in a graph. 